Welcome back to Blaze Capital. My name is Justin, and today we have an exciting CEO interview for you. I have Tim with me here today. He is the CEO of Haven Life Sciences. Hey, Tim, how are you? Great, Justin. How are you doing today? Excellent. So you and I were chatting just before we started recording, and we're both in Vancouver. I don't know about you, but today's June 15th, and I think we're going to be hearing about a nice update today. So not only is it nice to talk to you, but I think that we're as we get closer to going back to normal, this is looking really exciting. And I think that uh, talking about going back to normal, I think that psychedelics in your company specifically might be a way where people might be able to do that faster, where there might be some medical benefits that uh, we not, might not have known about before. And uh, the reason why I was ex excited to talk to you is because I think that as I get to know the space better and who the players are, I think that there's even more and more medical benefit out there. And the more people who, who can hear about the story is very special to me. So I've never heard about life, Haven Life Sciences before like this week. So maybe what you could explain to us is out of all the different psychedelic companies that are out there that we've heard about, what makes Haven unique? Well, Justin, you know, there are a lot of companies out there and, you know, there's been a lot of talk in this space and unfortunately not a, as much action as there's been talk. And I think that what sets us apart is there's now action and I'll, I'll kind of walk you through how we've taken our rhetoric and converted it into tangible activity. We have two distinct paths to revenue that allow us to be in revenue today. We have a, a nutritional supplement business that reinforces our, our core uh, mission of cognitive health and human performance by helping people with things like focus, alertness, immunity. So we've launched seven SKUs. They're available on our own e-commerce site. They're available on Amazon. They'll be available here in Vancouver at Nestor's and at Choices Markets for people to buy. So not only are we just talking about doing it, we've actually launched those products and they're here and now for people to buy. And so that's exciting. On the restricted compound side, psilocybin, we've got a facility operational in Jamaica. We have our first crop in production. We're doing extraction. We're preparing APIs. And as soon as possible, we'll be exporting that API from Jamaica to Canada for, for use with our supply customers. So that makes, that sets us apart. We've got two clear paths to revenue this year. Our shareholders don't have to wait three years for us to get through clinical trials before we get to revenue. We're in revenue in 2021. That's pretty exciting. And when you said uh, Nestor's Market and Choices, ironically, those are the two stores that are closest for me to where I go and get my groceries from. So I think the next time I'll be there, again, uh, sometimes I like to go to Choices, sometimes I like to go to Nestor's. So the next time I'm there, I'll be looking out for the packaging. And okay. I have a question for you that we weren't really planning for, but uh, like, have you noticed that uh, like there's been more of a demand like like during lockdown? There's like obviously mental mental wellness and mental health has been a big challenge for everyone, especially during this last year. Is that like is that is that kind of change your guys' business model at all? Or well, like have you noticed like it, more demand? Yeah. So I think frankly that that there's some there's some mega trends coming together that are setting up why is there the shroom boom right now why is there so much interest in in psychedelic mushrooms and functional mushrooms today and and the forces that that i see coming together first of all is mental health so 11 percent of the population has some sort of a mental health issue it's a huge global issue there's billions of dollars spent on medication for anxiety depression there's billions of dollars of lost productivity you know there, it, it's a crisis of incredible scale we had in British Columbia last year, we had more deaths from opioid overdose than we had from COVID, but we didn't shut the economy down for opioids. Um, I know. So mental health is a big issue. And you're exactly right that not only is it a, a big issue, but it's growing. The pandemic, I think the COVID pandemic is going to result in an echo pandemic of mental health issues because we've had a huge percentage of the population under duress for a long period of time at a scale that we haven't seen, in my opinion, since World War II whether you lost your job, lost a business, lost a loved one, or couldn't visit somebody in the hospital, couldn't have a funeral for someone that died, whatever it was, you can't expect people to have gone through or been locked up for 16 months, maybe with somebody you don't really like, you know, all of that causes uh, stress. And I think we're going to see mental health issues and then take the frontline medical workers. Like when was the last time we built temporary morgues? Like, yeah. not, not in my lifetime. So we've had medical professionals, working in battlefield conditions for over a year without much relief. First, there was all this unknown on how do we treat this. Then it was knowing how to do it, but not being able to get ahead of it. And there's been a relentlessness of the surge of, cust of, 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 of patients. So I think we'll see an echo effect of, of mental health. And then the other trend that's happening is the attitude toward mental health. I mean, mm. 
it really wasn't that long ago that we just called these people crazy and we put them in an asylum or a sanatorium and we didn't want to think about them. Just think of the movie, you know, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. That wasn't that long ago in our history, right? And today it's okay to not be okay. It's okay to say, hey, I'm seeing a therapist. Hey, I've got anxiety. Hey, I'm taking treatment for this. So that's allowing people to come out of the shadows and destigmatizing mental health issues. And so, yeah, I, I think that demand is there and, and policymakers are recognizing that. We're seeing, you know, in Canada, we've seen an accelerating number of compassionate use end of life exemptions for people with, with, with uh, cancer that are dying to, to get uh, psychedelic assisted therapy. And now we're seeing people that aren't dying, but are just ill and that's going to grow. So that sets up the need for the government to support a safe and reliable supply. And that's where Haven Life comes in. We're building a supply chain to support it. That's exactly what I was going to ask too, is uh, again, I think that the willingness for people to actually discuss the pain they might be having that is not in their body, but in their brain um, yeah. is actually becoming more and more, more okay. Meaning that it is okay to say that, yeah, uh, if you break your leg, you don't you never complain about that. You have a problem with your brain and you're not allowed to say that. And I think that everyone is now suffering together over the last year and longer. So everyone's like, hey, well, if I have these problems, other people probably do too. Well, um, and, you know, and, and you mentioned normal. So that's a good thing like, to, to, to talk about because with mental health, if you have severe anxiety, depression, treatment to, uh, resistant depression or PTSD, probably the best you can hope for right now is to find the right combination of drugs, whether they're legal or illegal and alcohol and whatever else the right combination to get you numb enough to get through the day, but not to normal, just, just numb. And, and that road too often leads to suicide. So what psychedelics offer is the ability to get back to normal, to get to a baseline where you wake up in the morning, you look forward to the day, you look forward to spending time with a significant other in your life, you look forward to vacation, you get like a, live your life. So, you know, it's, it's, it's different and, and it's exciting for, for us. I, I think of us as being in the industry of hope. The psychedelics industry is the industry of hope and Haven Life is a part of that. Mm -hmm. Something else that's very timely right now that I, I just remember that I watched, I think it was like this week or last week was Oprah Winfrey and the Prince Harry. Like they just recently made a documentary through Apple TV called uh, The Me You Don't See. And there is a, there's a, one of the, one of the segments is on psychedelics, how um, the brain has plasticity when it comes to, uh, to memory. And you can actually, you have like a, again, like your, your brain paths get founded again. I'm not, a, I'm not a doctor. I don't pretend to be one, but what I told, what, what I got from this was that there is a medical benefit from psychedelics that cannot be replicated in other types of treatments, meaning that it can actually train, it can change the plasticity of your mind, meaning it can fix the, the pathway that might've been broken, where when you see these events unfolding, it triggers you and you can actually fix that issue. The psychedelics yeah. the only fix? I don't know, but I think that having that as an option is very powerful. I'm curious on your thoughts on that. Yeah, so what, we, what we've heard from people, and, and particularly veterans with PTSD that have had a heroic dose with the psychedelic experience, is that that single dose can provide them with weeks of relief from the PTSD, because what it does is, is your PTSD and anxiety and depression are typically rooted in an unresolved event from earlier in your life, whatever that was, whatever that trauma was. And mm -hmm. what the psychedelic experience does is it allows your brain to confront and process that and resolve it for at least a period of time so that it's no longer haunting you in a way that manifests itself in that anxiety, depression, or PTSD. So it, it does change the way your brain works. And that, you know, there's been some legitimate science for decades on that. And whether it's John Hopkins University or U of T or USC or Imperial College or King's College, all of those places have centers for psychedelics. So we're talking about real legitimate science and now thousands of patients that have been treated with psychedelics and shown promise. We just haven't gone all the way through the protocols to get FDA or Health Canada approval, largely because it got caught up in the war on drugs, like, you know, got treated like crystal meth. I'm not Walter White, although people say I love that a little bit. I didn't want to say it, but uh, now that you did, again, uh, we know that uh, we got we got the Canadian Walter White. So before we deviate too far down the path, what I also wanted to say is that as, as important as all this stuff is, it's also very important that the business can survive so that when these things actually come to fruition, that your business is not on uneven footing. And I think that what we've learned in Canada more than, so I think what the Canadian cannabis boom told a lot of Canadian investors as well is that it is okay to have uh, big ambitions, but we have to make sure we can pay the bills. And right. if we pay the bills, we have to make sure that we're going to be creating shareholder value. 
So we have a question on that a little bit later, but my first question for you is, so you seem like you're, you're well-versed. It seems like uh, you probably don't have to work. My question for you is, why did you decide to go to work for Haven, notably at this, time, at this stage in your life? Yeah, so to put a fine point on it, what the hell is a 63-year-old packaged goods guy doing in the psychedelics industry, right? So yeah, so I spent 35 years working for companies that people know. I spent 18 years at Clorox. I spent seven years running the North American Brita business. I've worked in consumer electronics. And what brings me here is really personal experience and an engagement that's very emotional for me. I've raised five sons and before, before the, they're all fine today, but it hasn't been like that forever. Two of my sons have anxiety disorder. One has Asperger's. My one son was suicidal at 14. I uh, wouldn't wish that on anybody. My, my middle son got hit by a drunk driver six years ago and was seriously injured and didn't work for a couple of years. And thanks to the medical community became a, an opioid addict. So I spent two years watching him die. Um, ultimately it was cannabis that saved his life. That got me into the cannabis space about four years ago. But when I saw, when I saw the promise that psychedelics offer for anxiety, depression, PTSD, and my ability to bring my skills and experience to bear on this industry to help advance it through Haven Life. If I can help people to not deal with what I dealt with in the last three decades, that'll be my legacy. So I'm excited to be a part of it. And I feel an, an intimate connection and, and a, a profound motivation for success in this space. Mm -hmm. So your, your, your story is very personal too. And I, I can appreciate that you shared that because it might, might not be a fun topic for you to talk about. What I would also say is that inside of that documentary, again, from Oprah Winfrey, which I think a lot of people have probably seen now, I think mental health effects, like I think you, like there's like, I don't know, like two or three degrees of separation where you probably know someone like very close to you who is impacted by this, a family member, if it's not directly in your family, very close to your friends and family. And again, the fact that we can have these discussions a little bit more openly that we're having these troubles means that I think you're, you're tackling this for the right reason. And I think that uh, having you at the head of the company means that if your mission is to make sure that you can change these things, well, you have to make sure you can survive. And the fact that you started the, 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 our, our discussion by talking about how, how, can we make, how can we make sure to keep the lights on for the next year while we, while we work on getting these, uh, these things progressed so we can actually change people's lives. That's really powerful. So yeah. as a newly listed company, like why was now the right time um, to go public and uh, to talking about what we said before, like how do you plan on creating that shareholder value to keep, give people confidence in the stock? So, so let, me, let me start with how we keep the lights on. So the members of our team have that cannabis experience and the scar tissue, and we saw some of the recklessness that took place in that space. So what that meant is we've built a rare, very responsible cap table. We have a responsible balance sheet and we're very focused on cash flow. So our current uh, cash balance funds our, our roadmap through pretty much through the next year. And that means that we don't need to go to the capital markets to raise money at the wrong time. When we have the right story and the right way to add value, we'll go to the markets to raise capital. But we're not going to do it so that it's a highly dilutive event or you know, punitive to existing shareholders. So you know that allows us to keep the lights on. And as I said, we've, we've, we've built this business with a clear path to revenue. And we were, we were careful to build a team where we matched our world-class science team with the world-class operations team so that we can actually execute, get to cash flow, have, you know, deal with quarterly earnings and all those other things that are, are boring, but essential for survival. So myself, I've got, you know, my background, we have my chief science officer, Gary Leung, he's got over 20 years in the consumer packaged goods space. Chief Operating Officer Jenna Poser, she's got over 18 years in nutritional supplements, so she knows you know how to build brands and 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 execute. Our chair, Vic Newfeld, was at Afria, and previous to that, he was at, at Jameson Labs. So we built a team of business operators to to take the ideas and take them through execution. And so importantly, as I said, we've taken that rhetoric. And we've converted it into real action, and we've now got live, tangible product available for people to buy. Mm -hmm. So what it sounds like to me is that, um, again, I think that what's really important, what you said that people might not have picked up on because it might be intuitive to you, is that for the first push of this shroom boom, we're going to have to make sure we can sell product, not the psychedelic product you're going to see in two or three years. The same thing in the medical landscape where the recreational came later, the uh, recreational came later, medical came first. So what we have to do is make sure that we have a product people want to buy today that we can afford a fund or future growth instead of promising growth in the future. That's how the cannabis uh, sector got a really big disappointment. I also think that with that in mind, that 
having someone who has uh, decades of experience in consumer packaged goods is probably going to be a benefit to the company in that first leg. In addition to your personal determination, I want to make sure this succeeds from your personal story. So I think that combination makes Haven pretty unique. And I'm pretty much answering my final question for you here as I go through there. So maybe you could just reiterate, why should investors consider buying Haven today and hold through the end of the year? There's lots of choices in the cannabis space. Why, why should people consider Haven as their number one choice? And why should they do that through the end of the year? Like what's in your pipeline from now until December? So as I said, we've just launched our first seven SKUs in the nutritional supplement space. And importantly, that's leveraging a very well entrenched consumer behavior. 74% of Canadians take nutritional supplements on a regular basis. So we're not asking people to do something different. We're just saying, add to what you're doing for these other parts of your life that you need help on. Whether you want focus for work, whether you want to help yourself to relax, go to sleep, or you know, get yourself awake in the morning, or just mental clarity to get through your day, we have products for, for those, those benefits. And the, what's, what's really different, there's other people that are selling Lion's Mane and Reishi and, and uh, Turkey Tail. But what they're not doing is they're not doing it at the quality and the scale that we're doing. We, we've really set ourselves up where, first of all, we're not using ground mushrooms. We're using extracts, which gives us like a 10 to 1 concentration of the active ingredients and, mm -hmm. and accuracy and dosing and a higher quality. The second thing is we put together the advertising and promotion and education plan so that people will find these products on the shelf and buy them. If you go into Nestor's or Choices or you know, other well-known retailers, you won't see mushroom products on the shelf. You will see them at smaller, you'll see them at farmer's markets and small, yeah, but you don't see them in the major chains for two reasons. The product's not available at the quality and quantity that those chains need and companies don't have the programs to support them. We have enough packaged goods experience to actually ship to those customers. Augment that with our e-commerce, our own website, yourhavenlife.com or Amazon and leverage that evolving consumer behavior towards the online, online purchases. So. Our pipeline on the nutritional supplement side is growing our footprint of retailers, growing our footprint of e-commerce sites, and adding no, more products. So we've got a bunch of functional foods that we're working on that we'll be launching this year. We bought a manufacturing facility where we have formulation capabilities, so we're accelerating that. So that's what you should expect on that side. On the restricted compound side, we'll finish the construction of our lab here in, in Vancouver. We hope to secure our Health Canada license by the end of the year. Meanwhile, we'll continue to leverage their facility in Jamaica to, pro to, to pilot those things, get down the learning curve, produce mushrooms, produce API, and ship it to our supply chain customers. So both of those things are going to happen between now and the end of the year uh, that will reinforce our core strategies of, of getting to revenue and supporting human performance and cognitive health by both restrictive compounds and these nutritional supplements. Perfect. And like just for the audience too, for American viewers, so Choices Market is the equivalent of Whole Foods in Canada, meaning that um, we have Whole, Fo Whole Foods here too, but this is the Canadian born and bred uh, one. It's from BC. We're both from Vancouver, which is why we're talking about it. So if you're wondering what this means, it's, it's like Whole Foods saying, we want your product in our store. And they have a, they're going to have a more rigorous standard than other people. So it's kind of a little bit of a validation that again, Tim is a consumer package, consumer package goods veteran. We see the confirmation that he's actually gone into the store. So that's, that's good early feedback. I think that's really constructive. And if there's no, so what I was, I didn't, I wanted to jump in earlier, but what you basically said as well is that we might want to raise capital. We don't need to. We're structuring our company, company in a way where we're not dependent on anyone. Of course, we want to, we want to raise capital if it's advantageous, but we don't need to, which means that we're not going to try to surprise you. We're going to try to create value. And we want to make sure that we're going to stick around to actually complete our mission statement. So where could be where, where should people go to learn more about Haven? And again, we know like so okay, havenlifesciences.com. Perfect. So know where to get that. And I'm actually going to be very excited to cover the rest of the story as we go through here. So we're actually recording the CEO interview on the day before that I do the company profile. So you'll be watching this after the company profile. But Tim was very well spoken. I like what he said. And I am I will be considering Haven under my psychedelic portfolio. So Again, please drop me a comment. Tell me what you guys think. And we'll have that link to the website in the, in the description as well. So thank you very much for watching. And uh, please smash a thumbs up to make sure you support Tim and his company along their journey. Thank you very much.